I'm Dave. And I'm Mr. Sink. And welcome to the Mr. Sink Show, where we show you how to improve your home. What's Mr. Sink up to today? Mr. Sink and John the Cabinet Maker help to create new storage for a helpless shopaholic. Dave and Glenn play with their power tools. And Mr. Sink goes on an adventure to see how melamine is made. Well, let's, let's get, get started. started. G'day everyone. I got a phone call not long ago from Gina, one of our happy viewers, and she has a problem. So I'm here to help her. So let's go say hello to Gina. You're here. Hi, Gina. How are you? Come into the bedroom and I'll show you what my problem is. Wow, she's taken me into her bedroom. I'm trying to work out how I can help you. How can I help you? I've got no wardrobe space. This is it. This is all I've got. No wardrobes. My drawers are full. I've got clothes on top of my drawers. I need help. You need help. Wow, this does look like a bit of a problem. So you've got no wardrobe space at all. Wow. And these are all your clothes? These are my clothes, the suitcase is full. Like I said, the drawers are full. And I need more room. Oh, uh, okay. So I think I have an answer for you. Well, Mr. Sink, this is not the only problem. The problem actually goes bigger than this. Come through. This in here is supposed to be my guest bedroom, which has been transformed into my walk-in wardrobe. Come and have a look. Whoa, how many shoes do you have? Not that many. I am a female after all. <laughs> <laughs> and those boxes are full of bags to match the shoes. And this is your wardrobe, yes. all hanging on your bed? Yes. That's my partner's stuff, that's my stuff, the other side's my stuff. Everything on the bed is mine. Well, Gina, I have the solution for you. You do? We're going to call John from Italia Kitchens and we're going to get him to help you. Welcome, John. Hi, I'm Mr. Sick. I'm very well. How are you doing? Not bad. Good. So, Gina has a problem. Can you tell him your problem? Well, John, this is my cupboard space. I've got nothing. No cupboard space and I need to get my clothes into a cupboard. Can you yeah. help me out? Yes, no worries. Yeah? What do you need done? I'm looking for wardrobes so I can put my clothes into it. Yeah. And as you can see, there's no room for clothes. So yeah, what can you do for me? Well, I need to interject here because this is only part of the problem. <laughs> I'm going to show you what needs to go into the cupboard. No are, you, are you ready for this? Yeah. Cool. This is it, John. Have a look at all this. Oh my God, that's a lot of clothes. <laughs> Not only that, have a look at all these shoes. Jesus. I reckon well, she can open a shoe shop, but we need to find room to put all this in. Okay. Can you help us? Yeah. We'll just make a few ward make a wardrobe, hang all the clothes up, and a couple of shelves to put all the shoes. Okay, you, we don't think we need to buy a warehouse? No, it looks like it. <laughs> might need more than one wardrobe. Okay, cool. All right, well, let's show us how we're going to do this. Put a real tall wardrobe. Okay. Um, about 2,400 high. Right, and that's up to the ceiling? Uh, it's uh, just stop about there, about that height there. Yep. Okay, and we'll have a shelf on the top so she can put a little few storage yep. stuff on there. And we'll have it, we'll make it about 2,400 long here. Okay, cool. So this is pretty easy to make? Yeah, pretty simple. All ah, right, cool. So hurry up and make it and come back. No worries. All cool. right, mate. Thanks. No worries. Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered how melamine is made? Now, melamine is the material that's used to make kitchens and cabinets and wardrobes and all that sort of stuff. Well, today, we're actually going to show you how it's made. And we have here today Angelo from Tasmanian Wood Panels. Welcome, Angelo. Now, you're going to show us how melamine is made. Is that right? That's right. Good. So, let's walk over here and have a look what melamine is first. Okay? No so, this is what they call melamine. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. So, we're going to turn that plain chipboard into that. I've always wondered how that's done. And that actually feels quite warm. It feels like it's hot off the press, as they say. Is that right? Yeah, that's just fresh off the press. Okay. And is it, is it supposed to be hot like that? Yeah, uh, the process actually uses a lot of heat to uh, laminate the board. So, yeah, it's supposed to be hot. Okay. Well, as you can see, I'm wearing my safety gear. 
uh, because if you don't, well, it could cause a few problems here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go have a look out in the uh, factory and to see how this is this is turned into this. Nice. Okay. Come along. Ah. Okay. Well, this is where it all begins, right? Yeah, we get the uh, raw board, which is made out of uh, just basically just pine and radiata pine and whatnot. We get it straight from the mill and we load it straight onto the machine here. Okay, so from the machine here, what then, what then, what then happens? Well, we've got a couple of holding bays for a couple of packs so we can run full pelt at all times. Um, gets fed into the machine over here. We've got the scissor lift that lifts the board up and feeds the machine one sheet at a time and cleans the top and bottom of it. It cleans the, sh the sheets. Oh, we have a brush that just basically just brushes all the dust off. Okay, so what's happening here? I can see the sheets are getting pushed along here. Yeah, this is um, how we can feed one sheet at a time into the machine because, uh, well, we lay up one sheet at a time, basically, and we're going to do one sheet at a time. So the paper gets laid up top and bottom, uh, brush dusts it, and uh, yeah, it gets fed into the machine. Okay, explain this bit here. This is where it's going in. And cleaning, is that correct? Yeah, it's basically just a scrubber. It's a couple of rotating brushes just spinning on an axle and uh, basically just dusting all the stuff off the top of the board and the bottom of the board. Now, can you explain why it has to be cleaned? Well, these boards, when they're made at the mill, they have to get sanded to, fin to get a good finish, surface finish. Yep. Sometimes there tends to be a bit of dust left over on it and in between the packs it doesn't get blown off. So we just do this as a precaution to make sure when we lay up the actual paper that uh, we'll be stick to a good surface. Ah, so it's for the glue to stick, no, is that right? We don't use glue. Oh. No. We are, the paper is actually made out of a melamine plastic type stuff. And uh, with the resin that it has in it, it actually melts into the surface. So oh, it wow. has to have a very, very good finish. Well, there you go. I actually thought it was glued on, but it's not. No. But we'll get to that, won't we? Yeah. Ah, cool. Well, this is quite interesting. We're up to the next step. This is the bit where we start to see colour go onto the sheet. So explain to us this step here. I can see like a like some kind of paper gets stuck to the board. Um, can you show us what it's all about? Well, I've got a little sample here for you. To okay. Have a look at. The um, actually starts off feeling like normal paper, but yeah. then it gets impregnated with plastic resins and whatnot, and you end up with a very quite quite brittle piece of a uh, plastic type paper feeling stuff. So. So this this gets like melted to the surface yeah. of the chipboard. Okay, that's a bit further on in the line. Uh, when it goes into the press, it actually gets melted in there using temperature and a lot of pressure. But uh, as you can see, this stuff here is basically just 80 GSM plastic paper. Wow. All right, well... That's quite, if you crush it, it'll actually fall into little pieces. There you go. Oh, there you go. Wow, okay. Well, let's have a look. So if we come over here, so what's actually happening is down there, a piece of paper comes on both sides of the timber and yeah. it gets stuck. Yeah. But it's not glued on yet. So no. how, how is it sticking? Well, right now, at this point here, it's passing underneath a static curtain of air where we basically, well, it's static. Everyone knows static electricity uh, 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 attaches to other things and whatnot. Is that, is that so when you get a balloon and you make yeah, your hair yeah. go up? Yeah, exactly right. Well, although so I don't have any hair anymore. <laughs> well, I can't say anything about that, but <laughs> it's a bit more professional than your uh, balloon against your hair trick. It uh, uses this curtain of air and it basically just takes away everything except for the sticky parts. So it lays up onto the top and the bottom of the board and it sticks there for about 10 seconds, long enough just so it go through the machine. Oh, wow, okay, so the static electricity makes it stick together yep. until it gets into there. So it gets fed into the machine. What a tool. Hi again with Glenn Tullamrain Hardway. G'day. Mate, how are you? Mate. Good, good, mate. Good, good. Yeah. What about today, mate? We've just got a, just a few different power tools. Power? Just power tools. That's what I like to Battery, hear, yeah. So. Oh, beautiful. Mm. So, um, well, I'm guessing this is a drill? Cordless drill. Cordless drill? One of the most handiest things you could ever have. Okay, yeah. but um, is it different types of drill apart from oh, the cordless there's one? hundreds of different types. Hundreds of, there's electric, you know, and, oh. Probably 50 different types of cordless type drills, impact drivers. Now, I've, yeah. I've, I've heard oh. of different terms like your hammer and your... Yeah, and, and yeah, normal drilling. Yep. This has got hammer action on this particular one. Yep. Just turn it to hammer and you're on hammer action for drilling concrete. Okay, so, so for concrete, uh, that sort of brick, stuff. Yeah, brick, yeah, that sort yep. of thing, yeah. And the other one would just be to screw into walls, that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, you've got drilling and then screwing. So drilling, 
you know, just for drilling holes, yep. and then screwing gives you more torque, and you've got a torque setting there. That you well, you're screwing with my head at the moment, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what about this? That's an angle grinder. Oh, it's a big mother too. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. So what, what would you use this for more, more oh, purpose for? Cutting steel, cutting concrete. Tiles? Just tiles, yeah, you can yep. put a tile blade in it, that's just yep. for cutting concrete, that blade. But just for cutting anything, really, any, any material you want to cut. Yeah, I know, wood. I know Sam, goggles. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Very dangerous <laughs> these things. What about this? Uh, that's just that's a belt sander. Oh, sander. Yeah, just you know, sanding timber, shaping it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and it's got it's got like is it like a little catch or is it? Yeah, you put a little bag. It has a bag that comes with it. Collects all the dust. Or oh, a beautiful. little bit of the dust. You get dust everywhere. Anyway. Oh, good. Sounds yeah. like a, sounds yeah. like a, something very handy. Yeah, no, they're very handy. Yeah. Ah, good. Mm. And um, what have yeah, you got for me today, mate? For you, mate. A little blower, mate. Blower. Blower. Yeah. After you've made all the dust, you can just blow all the dust away. Yeah, but yeah. hey, does this suck or does it blow? No, it only blows this one. You can get one that sucks, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. All right, mate. Well, um, you know what to do? Power up, mate. We'll blow you away, mate. Yeah. Good for doing your hair too, Dave. Actually, yeah, getting that hair right. Oh, yeah. beautiful, yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, just quietly, we're going to blow Mr. Sink away too. What do you I think? I think so, yeah. He'd, yeah, he'd enjoy that. Sounds like a plan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Power tools. What a tool. That's a tool. What a tool! Gina! Yes? Your wardrobes have arrived! Finally! Mm -hmm. I can put my clothes away! Let's go! Well, the way you've made these, you've got plenty of room in them, I found. So, I think yeah. I think Jean is going to be really happy with this. Oh, I think she will. Yes. <laughs> She'll be right. So, you've built, the, you've built the actual cabinet, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is I'm, I'm putting the legs on for the adjustments. The floor's a bit out of the level. Oh, is that what uh, they are? An adjustable, adjustable leg. Oh, okay, so it's like, oh wow, so it adjusts like that. Yeah. And that gives you an adjustable height so you yeah, can keep so it level. Keep is that right? Level, yeah. All right, cool. And that's it, we'll just put them underneath and um... Alright, cool. Now, your young bloke here, your apprentice, what's his name? Alex. Alex. How are you doing, mate? Good, good. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so, no, we'll lift it the other way. Oh, yeah. you, you, you're caging me in. I'm, I feel like I'm in a coffin here. This is a good hiding spot. There we go. Now these hinges that you're putting on, they just click in, right? That's right, yeah. Just press the click in easy. It's easy to install. Get that in. So as they just click in, they actually click out as well. That's right. There's a clip on the back there, you just pull it out and it clicks out. Okay. Oh, this is really noisy here. Sounds like this is where all the action is. And I can feel a whole heap of heat coming from here. Um, so explain this part here. All right, well basically this is where all the heat comes in from our burner outside. It comes in here and gets fed into the top and bottom plates of the press. They're okay. usually sitting just a bit below 200 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow. So uh, yeah, it's quite a bit of heat and that's why you can feel it here. This is my favorite spot to stand in winter. Yeah, it is nice and chaste. I mean, we're in the middle of winter here. And I've got my short sleeves on and I'm hot. But um, it looks like a big giant waffle machine. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, but uh, it uses a lot of a lot more pressure than your uh, average waffle machine. Um, just the top plate alone is about 25 tons, and that gets dropped down and gets pushed with a bit with about 350 bar of pressure, hydraulic pressure. So. Oh, so I can't use it to heat up my pizza. You could try, but you probably have a paper thin pizza out the other side of it, mate. <laughs> So explain this next step. What's happening over here? Um, well, all the paper we use is a little bit oversized because, well, as much money as you want to spend on a big machine, you can't exactly line it up millimetre by millimetre. So all the paper we get in is a little bit oversized. So uh, this next step here, it goes through the trimming machine where it trims the front, the back and the sides um, and it basically just cleans up the edges. Oh, wow. Okay. So 
the, the board is now made. Is that what we're saying? It's, it's now made, it's just being trimmed. Yeah, basically that's laminated now. It takes about 16 seconds for the press to do its magic. Um, and then you've got a really durable surface that's uh, what's scratch resistant and basically mop it up, whatever you want. No chemicals to really do any damage to it. So yeah, that's basically finished board. It's got to get cleaned up now and uh, then we'll send it through the packing station. Okay, well this is the final step by the look of it. Uh, yeah, basically, um, once it's come off the trimmer, it gets cleaned up through this little brush machine we have here. And then it comes through here where we, uh, we actually inspect the quality of the board. Okay. And so. We, and then we grade it. So when you say inspect, inspection is done by human? Yeah, nothing beats a human eye for this job here. Okay, so. Uh, so you've got the vacuum sensors again? Yeah. So it lifts it up? It lifts it up and um, whatnot. And then you can check the top and the bottom. And if it's good enough, it goes into A grade. If it's not, it goes into side grade. Ah, okay. Well, at this point here, we're actually strapping up the pack. Um, we use, well, we use man to do this. Yep. We use employees to do this because uh, basically it's the last, last little bit of quality control. If anything's been missed by the guy on the inspection station, he'll pick it up here. And uh, well, yeah, and one of the main important things that have to do with this is because it's warm, the board is so flexible and the way you leave it is the way it's going to set. Ah, so this is actually the most important stage. It is, well, it's all important, but this is, this is the final important stage here. We basically strap the pack up on these rollers to keep it level. Once it's strapped, we move it over next door to our warehouse where we sit on the ground, which is nice and flat, and we let it cool down for three days. Three days? Yeah, well, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a cold process. It, the machine heats up each sheet separately, and it's quite a good insulator. So even though the outside might be cold, the inside of the pack will still be considered hot. Well, we'll hit the end of the line and uh, it's actually quite cold in here. It needs to be cold in this area, doesn't it? Yeah, um, we, this is where the board sits and waits to be cooled down, so it usually takes three days. Okay, and it's also a lot more quieter, which is fantastic because those machines are really doing my head in. But um, what's the process from this point onwards? Well, basically, this is where we do all our warehousing. So from here, it gets loaded onto trucks and goes out to all the manufacturers that use our product, which could be for kitchens, wardrobes, furniture, um, cabinets, basically anything that uses our board. Well there you go everyone. Now when you look at your kitchen or your furniture, it's probably come from this place here where Angelo and his team make the Mullamine board. So we'd like to say thank you Angelo. Thank you Mr Sink. Now, John, I have a question. Yeah. To be a good cabinet maker, you've got to be good at screwing, right? For well, that's why my name's Mal. Kia <laughs> <laughs> For you guys out there, John's surname is Kia And Kia translated into English, means nail. So it's a bit ironic, a carpenter with the surname Nail. <laughs> Right, the whole job is almost done. Everything's been completed. All we're gonna do is put the handles in and John's gonna show us how. Well, I'm trying to clean this up, but the more I keep cleaning it, the more I keep smudging. Yeah, don't clean what? it like that. I've got some special spray here. It's called John's Secret Spray. Okay. There we go, show how it's all done. Wow, that's awesome. So that cleans off everything? Uh, almost everything. Almost everything? Almost everything. Okay, so what kind of things does it clean? It cleans texture marks, grease. Um, texture violence. marks? Yeah. It cleans all text marks, easies. All right, watch this then. So you mean to tell me it's going to get that off? It'll, one wipe and we'll take it off. Not with your hand. You need John's secret spray. Give me a look at this. Oh wow, look at that. Good 
That's pretty awesome. John's secret spray, eh? That's it. Who's John? I'm John. <laughs> <laughs> John has actually got a really cool tip for us at the moment. Now, over here, we have the doors which aren't closing properly. Now, you guys out there that have kitchen cabinets that never close properly because they're touching each other or they're out of square, John is going to show us how to adjust it. So show us, John. All right. Now, you can see there it's touching the door on the bottom and on the top, it's touching on this end here. Yep. So what you do is you grab that screw, the center screw here. Okay. And you wind it out. It brings the door this that, way. Yeah, that, that way, yeah. And you close it again. Okay, then that, so gap, the, that gap there is pretty even. So now it's still touching because there's a big gap on the bottom of that. So what I'll do is I send the screw, just wind it back that way, and check the door. Oh, and now it's closing perfectly. Now it's closing perfectly. So, Explain. So it's this screw here. Yeah. As you screw it in and out, it adjusts the door this way. way. And then you got the back screw. Yep. That adjusts forward. This way. Back and forward. Well, the job is done. Thank you, John. No worries. Thank you, Alex. No problem. Now we're going to call Gina in and give her a big surprise with her new cupboards. Gina, come on, have a look. What do you think? Wow, that's bigger than I thought it was going to be. You got heaps of room here. We've got some shelves here. Excellent. We've got plenty of uh, hanging space. Hanging space. Oh, Your okay. shoes can go up here. No, I think I'll put my bags up there. Well, you can you even got a little bit of storage space right at the top as well. I can't reach up there, Mr. Singh. Maybe you can get a ladder. Gonna have to. Wow. But uh, you got plenty of room. I don't know, I'm not sure we're going to fit all the stuff in. I actually recommend call John back again and put another one the same size as this in the next room and it's going to solve all your problems. Oh, well, thanks heaps, Mr. Steve. No worries. So we've got a happy uh, Gina here now and we'll see you next time. For more information about anything you've seen in this episode or to contact us with your tips and ideas, visit mrsinktv.com.au or follow us on Facebook at The Mr. Sink Show. Well, we really hope you enjoyed today's show and we'll see you next time. Guys, I made some coffee, guys. Where'd you guys go? Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to open Come on, Mr. Singh, you can have it too. Ah, <laughs> uh, not my wardrobe. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered why? <laughs> well, hello, everyone. How have you? <laughs> oh, God, why does this happen? All right. Well, we're going to show you today, and we're going to have John, not sorry, John. Wow, the wrong person. <laughs> All right, still rolling. <laughs> <laughs>